Hey everyone, uh, Matt McMahon here. Uh, ooh, uh. Okay, so, um, yeah, zoom in on my face. Um, so I've just done a video um, about uh, what I've done with this motor. Um, as you can see, it's just in the process of stopping. So um, this will probably be my fourth video on it. And I just, um, I'm not able to f upload uh, any videos past 15 minutes now. Um, thanks to who you know you know who you are um, anyways um, so I'm gonna take all these coils off and I'm gonna show you and sort of uh, allow myself to brainstorm as I go to let you know what's going on in the future I cannot wait to try this out this is um, a, uh, a bi filler 26 gauge 23 gauge but um, backed onto each other and then insulation put in between. I really can't wait to see what this, uh, that one will do. That'll actually be my very next test uh, as soon as I'm done going through all the stuff with you guys. Um, maybe I'll have a fifth video um, to just show you maybe the difference. All right, ah, oh, sweet. Okay, didn't think we were gonna get that. All right, so this is the one from the first video just explaining the basic concept uh, was very rough sorry about that this is the second one showing advancements um, including a disc brake um, but what I would like to add to it um, first of all I'm gonna just buy a bike for now um, probably spend fifty dollars on, on an old bike that has uh, aluminum rims and then I've designed these brackets a while ago Let's see if you can get in there so these will be tack welded um, directly to the frame probably in the corners and then it'll have a, um, a screw on piece right here and here so that way you can hold the magnet down in place so that way no matter how fast your bike is going it won't matter um, I'd actually, I actually can't wait to see what will happen um, when the bike is actually going down on a downhill slope and see how the motor reacts um, or how the circuitry reacts. So um, there's one part to this that's missing and that is the front wheel. Um, figured out that, we'll use this drawing as the example, So, figured what would be best is to actually combine uh, conventional technology with the Bedini motor. Now, because of how the Bedini motor will work, it'll if um, we were to have a hub motor on here, which if anybody wants to donate a hub motor, that would be absolutely amazing because I hear that they're expensive and uh, I'm sure there's places where you can get them for free. So, if anybody wants to throw one my way, that would be awesome. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hub motor on the front wheel and Bedini motors you always have to give the motor a little spin to get it started so if we have the if we have the motor um, a regular conventional motor on it that would start propelling the bike then it would be able to uh, to start the Bedini motor at that point so maybe once it uh, it senses um, you know, once you push the the throttle um, potentiometer um, to move forward, it'll stay on for three seconds, and then it'll automatically f switch over to uh, the Bedini um, the Bedini motor uh, power or the SSG. So um, then, what's going to happen is, I'm assuming um, no matter how many you have of these Bedini motors, um, I'm sorry, the yeah, the Bedini motors or coils or magnets in place. Whenever you go up a hill, it's still going to be too much force. It will continue to go get you up, but at some point, it will actually stop moving you because um, there's not enough force behind it. So if we were to combine the power of the hub motor and the power of the Benini motor, it would reduce the load on the hub motor. Now, if you're going downhill, there can be a... Um, um, to control both for whether you're going downhill or uphill um, there'll be a, um, a level sensor and if 
you're going uh, downhill, it'll detect that and it'll also be, be able to detect that your, um, your speed is increasing and then it can actually take the power off of the hub and use it to charge the batteries. Now, um, I've been in search of some um, super capacitors, um, particularly the, uh, I think it's 26 farad, uh, 2600 farad, uh, 2.5 um, volts DC, I believe it is, four 15 volt batteries made out of this. And because of the way how um, these super capacitors charge so quickly and they don't actually consume a pile of the energy from the um, sorry a pile of energy through heat trying to charge the electrolyte in a battery um, it is a much more efficient use of energy so um, just by having those instead of a regular uh, set of batteries that you know if you're going to even charge it conventionally it's going to take you three minutes three to five minutes to charge up one set of batteries uh, sorry one battery so if you want to say stop off at a coffee shop possibly a Tim Hortons if you're in Canada <laughs> uh, maybe Dunkin Donuts if you're in the States I don't know what you guys typically typically drink um, you can always put that underneath the, as a comment. Uh, I would actually like to know what you guys drink for coffee. Um, I live on that stuff. So um, if you go to have a coffee, you could take your bike, obviously lock it up and plug it in. And while you're having your coffee, by the time you're done your coffee, your, your bike is completely charged and ready to go for the whole day. And this isn't even, even with the conventional um, um, Bedini. This, this, this is just as an electric bike you could do this. This would be so much better. Um, but what I also wanted to show is that some people already know that the Bedini circuit actually has, um, the Bedini motor has two circuits. You don't actually need to drive another motor at the same time, which I'd like to do some torque tests um, based on that. So if you're not charging that other battery, because you don't need to be. Maybe it could be powering a powering a flashlight or something, or even taking that um, that power and um, then reinverting it back to um, to a lower power rating, um, like you know half an amp. So that way, then it actually can be used. So um, possibly, if someone has a, a source that's better than what they're charging on eBay for the. Um, for the uh, 2,600 uh, 2, farads, um, 2.5 volts uh, supercapacitors, um, that would be awesome. Um, I'm really starting to think that this, it, either way, with the combination of this very efficient motor, um, it, it, it barely consumes any energy. Um, from the battery to be able to run this motor. So if you're say running uh, you know six, twelve of them at the same time and possibly down in the future like I showed with this another uh, so 15 total um, I bet you that you will have a lot of force. Um, it's not said to have a lot of force. Who knows what it'll be like when it actually um, has everything combined um, as one and uh, so yeah I'm uh, making headway um, I guess my sixth video will actually be um, on the testing of the different ones I need to actually get more uh, tools I'd like to get see if there's like a, um, a jewel tester because I don't see anything that says jewels on my uh, on my multimeter because um, that would be the real way to find out how much energy you're actually uh, converting and how much you're actually losing in the process so um, we do know that these motors can power a fan so that shows that it is a much more efficient use of energy um, and I'd actually love to compare the two um, maybe someone else can do that um, who knows so I think that covers it all it's two videos in one day um, I guess take care and uh, if you, uh, if you have any suggestions, comments uh, you'd like to make about this, if you have any other ideas, 
Um, I would love to be able to implement uh, more ideas if they're very useful. Um, and uh, we'd love to have an electronics guy on board to be able to help with this. So if you know an electronics whiz that has some time, which most people nowadays doesn't don't have any time, um, please uh, show them this video, any of these videos. It would be uh, very helpful. So uh, take care. Have a great week. And uh, Matt McMahon, take care. Love you all. Bye-bye.